Okay, we are back and we are talking about another product and I'm not sure how I feel about something like this, but I'm going to tell you one thing. What is it? Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it looks like a, one of those like spike cameras that you get to catch people from speeding, doesn't it? It, it doesn't even look like a telescope. <laughs> oh, this is a telescope? I swear when I open the case, it doesn't look like a telescope. <laughs> Where's a telescope to? It just looks like a mount, but that's the direction it needs to go, I think, Simon. What? You know? So, all um, integrated. Jokes aside for a second, um, <laughs> what is this? This is basically Sorry. the future of what the public has been asking. One of the biggest things that I used to drive me crazy when I'm sitting there at the store and I'm helping a customer is they always yeah. say to me, I want something that's automated. Right. I want it to just put it down on the ground, I just want to turn it on, and I want to see stuff. Yeah. That's, where, that's want, the direction it needs to go, folks. I want to see stars. Right. You don't want to fiddle with adapters, exactly. periodic error, you know, None of guiding. that kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, I just want to see stars. And do you know what the funniest thing is about yeah. ZWO? They yeah. listened. <laughs> and they created a product called the Sea Star. Yeah. Because that's exactly cool. what we're doing. We're seeing stars. Yeah, no, that's what it does. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. It's so portable. It's so practical. And it's affordable. That's the You'll big critical part. You'll discuss the price on your own. I'm on. You can check up on the pricing. Uh, all the information is going to be down below on the, uh, the current pricing. Obviously, I don't want to tell you it now because I don't want to date this video. Right. And it, it's cool. It's 50 millimeter aperture, 250 millimeter focal length. Uses a 462, what is it? The 462 sensor. Yeah, 462 sensor. Uh, color sensor. Color sensor. And uh, it works in zero degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. Yep. temperatures what they what they indicate about it and uh i i really think if, if this is eventually and i mean this with all seriousness this really is the direction i think imaging needs to go so it's it's more i don't know obtainable for accessible to the broader audience so to speak where you really don't have to fiddle with a lot of things and uh, maybe they'll have bigger versions of it I, I believe they're actually working on this. Um, this is not yeah. a prototype. This is actually something that you can genuinely buy. And again, the market that this is actually aiming for is the type of person that they're not necessarily want to get into right. imaging, but yeah. they want to get into astronomy. I think that's the critical yeah. thing right there. Entry level. Kind exactly. Of thing. Now, the whole thing is obviously powered um, through an app of some description, as you can see. I, we've yeah. got it plugged in right now because there's a, there's a battery in this. What's yeah, the battery six life? Hour, six, six hour, six hour battery life, which is pretty cool. I mean, um, I wouldn't even dare stay out that long to be totally honest. Yeah, they can't see it, but there's little lights blinking on this side that tell you when it's full or not. So it's like four bars, it's on one right now. We now, we power. turned this on a minute ago and it was talking to us. Yeah, and it's quiet. It's cool, I'm, I'm being honest with you. It was quiet, it sounded like a high quality mount. So we're gonna make it move. Yeah. So if we were gonna be quiet for a second. Yeah, hold listen on. to this. That is cool. That's, it's really, really quiet. It's something it? as <laughs> small as this. I mean, it really, it, it just feels like one of these little PTZ style cameras. PTZ yeah. stands for point, tilt, and zoom. Um, it's cool. But, uh, you know, what is your experience on this? I mean, tell well, me. Well, there's only been a few scopes out on the market. You, uh -huh. know, the, you know, the other ones they had with Kickstarter yep. to fund those projects. And uh, now they're getting it into this little compact thing. And I think they're just going to become more and more popular. I think they had the Unistellar. Yep. And then the, um, what is the, uh, the Violis. Um, uh, God, there's, there's, there's so a few, many. There's, there's a, a few of them. Yeah, the yeah there's Unistellar, what was it? I but I, I think this is Stellina. the big, Stellina, that was Stellina, it. that was it. I think yeah. that was the, the, the gap that um, in this particular market, I think has now been, has been solved. Yeah. at this particular price point. No other system um, out there with this type of technology, can you put this thing down on the ground? Right. And I, I mean it, I, I'm price. not exaggerating. Yeah. You simply put it down on the ground and turn it on. Yeah, self-aligns. Everything's controlled through the phone. It's so cool, little app. Yeah. It also has all the important features that you, know, you would want, like plate solving. Again, mm -hmm. if you're not familiar, you don't understand what plate solving is, it takes a picture of the sky and it actually works out where it is. Calculates. And more importantly, it's able to tell the insides where to move the scope. Yeah. And you know, you can do it up to like 30 seconds, even to a minute. I mean, obviously there's some yeah. limitations because of field rotation. Right. Um, but I mean, you've had a go at this already. Yeah, we've, we've messed around with this thing. I like the automated voice. It's got the voice too. Yep. To you. 
I mean, makes me feel less lonely. How hard was it to set up? Be honest. Honestly, it was super simple. We, we put the tripod down, put this on top, fired up the app, and I think it actually almost started doing a, its own thing on its own. I mean, it, it actually wanted to start a line. I'm like, hey, we're indoors, folks. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't you know? even weigh anything. It doesn't weigh anything. What is How much it? does it weigh? I think it was six pounds. Six? Rough, roughly five or six pounds. That's seriously light. Yeah, I yeah, mean, see, light. that was always a complaint about a lot of people with like scopes. Yeah. When they see this, they go, God, it weighs too much. When they streamline imaging like this, I'll be more interested. <laughs> well, that's the thing. This is imaging at the end of the day. Yeah, if you can yeah. Do... It, it Here's the thing. I, I just remembered this. Yeah. It almost doesn't matter if you've only got 30 second exposures because it also yeah. has stacking. Right. So if you did um, live stacking, it would yeah. actually accommodate for that as well. Yeah, it would, that's true. It would actually yeah. calculate your field rotation. Yeah, it would. It would do that. And uh, you know, for some of you who want to see things in color, and this is one of the big complaints people yeah. have when they see things visually, you don't see things in color, you know, typically, unless you have big scopes and you're looking at particular objects. So tell me a little bit about the optical design aspect of this. You said it was well, a... They, all they, well, they, it's a short, it's obviously a fast uh, triplet ED, I guess it's, they say it's apochromatic. Mm -hmm. So that's important if you're using a fast scope, you do need the color correction if you don't want to have like bloated stars or purple stars, it'll help avoid that. And in this particular aperture, it's gonna, it's easier to get away with. Oh yeah, by know? a long shot. Yeah. And interestingly enough, um, yeah. Looking at this, you said it was 250 millimeters. Yeah, it's f5. Well, if it was, wait, f5 as well. So technically, this scope yeah. should be out to here, but it's not. Right, it's folded, right? So it's a folded refractor on the inside. Yeah, I guess so. And that might explain why we have this, like, we didn't engineer this thing, folks. We looked at it. And you, obviously, they would have had to fold it inside there like so. So explain to me what exactly is a folded refractor for those who don't understand. Well, they do have folded refractors. And the whole point of it is just to keep it compact. So that it's so it's easy to transport it. Right. They do this in refractors even ten inches, you know. Because well, the problem here is that even with a ten inch refractor, like if it was yeah. an f twelve, yeah, practicality it'll be so long. Long, of course. Uh, and the only way to make them practical is to fold them in half. In fact, yeah. If I, I mean, obviously they had to get the camera and everything to fit in there, so they're going to have to fold. So it if we're going to gonna look at a side profile, I mean. This is actually at max speed, which is actually still pretty damn fast. It's fine. Yeah. You know, this is great fun. It's, it's not a marathon. So know? if you look here, um, through this section here would yeah. be the actual main part. Yeah, of the you'd refractor. probably be out here a little further. And then you know? you've got the two mirrors that are sitting inside of here yeah. that creates the folded refractor design. Because what was interesting was, is the first thing I did when Daniel pulled this out of the box and put it on the table, I looked yeah. inside because, you know, it was like, I know. I I'm, I'm just I'm like, what? like that. Is it really? <laughs> and it's like the first thing I saw was like, wait a minute, the sensor looks yeah. like it's further behind. And I was putting my hand here doing this going, What's going on here? And that's when you told me it was a folded refractor. And I was like, what the heck? Um, adjustable tripod. Yeah, I mean. Got an I don't know how high it goes. Did I mention that? I mean, well, to be honest, you can actually put this really on matter. any tripod um, if you have your own tripod. Yeah, in theory, you could. And it really wouldn't matter if it was high or not. No, I mean, this is like kind of like thing this. I expected that you could just simply set it down. Um, yeah. And I don't even think the leveling is important. Because if, yeah. it, if it's plane solving, it can still work it out if the floor yeah, wasn't level. Yeah, it would level. still work it out. Yeah, it would. You're right. So yeah, no, this is, Can't this, is definitely, this is definitely something I wasn't expecting. I can definitely see some stars with this. You know, I keep saying that because that's the name of the, uh, the, the yeah, system. Yeah, they just want to see some bright DSOs in color. Indeed, they do. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be limited for things like planetary nebula, obviously. It's not bringing in enough focal length. But no, but I mean, you can definitely do um, you know, some extended sky objects, you know, quite North easy. American Nebula, oh, Cygnus yeah. regions, you know, the milk and the Milky Way. I mean, right? even in the winter sky, if you looked, I mean, this with Orion would be awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool. You could part of, probably make out Burner's uh, loop with this thing, you know? If, you know what, um, I probably would say you could feel the view. if you're in a uh, dark enough site. Yeah. Um, I think we covered all of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be limited on what objects are going to look okay, because they're going to be so tiny in this thing. Well, I mean, let's make this clear. I mean, planets, this definitely isn't going to do planets, of is course. it? Of yeah, course. We're, we're gonna... talking 250 millimeter focal length. It's I wonder just if you could short. do solar with it. You We'd can. have to go into and check the scale, but no, you I can. think it would be all right. Because um, I, I remember, if I remember correctly, somebody yeah. um, who was messing around with this, they just got a mylar sheet and they just stuck it Did to white the front. Light. Yeah. and they just did white light with it. That's pretty cool. I mean, 250 millimeters with that particular uh, sensor. sensor, the, four, uh, the 462. Yeah, the scale. 
you would actually get easily get a full disc. Yeah. There's yeah, no bar load built into this. You get Same an easy full disc. Yeah, totally. So I think, you know, for bigger objects, it's going to be ideal. Like I say, North American Nebula would be cool. Um, you know, you can see the North American Nebula with your naked eye. Yes, I've seen yeah. it several times, yeah. especially yeah. if you know where you're looking. Yeah, if you know where you're looking. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, I don't know about the color being dark, but it attracts heat, all the wavelengths. Well, that's only if you're outside. Yeah. You know, we could be talking about stuff like we'll this. We'll talk about that later. So thank you very much for watching this video. We will be back with more videos somewhere. There's boxes here. I don't know. Again, I don't know how this works. I'm the guy that does the video because I am the stupid astronomer. And you do that so I don't have to. Exactly. I do the stupid <laughs> things so you don't have to. I'm Daniel Mouncey, a.k.a. Dr. D, and we'll be back at you soon.